this is Eric Thompson. I'm the lead investment advisor and founder of Peerless Wealth, a registered investment advisory firm right here in Columbus, Ohio. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to talk about some basic estate planning concepts today. And I'll, I'll give you the disclaimer that I'm not an estate planning attorney. Uh, and, and to really delve into this and, and get things like a will and a trust done, you do need an attorney to do this. But I want you to understand the basic concepts so you will know if you need to be doing more things than you are now to protect your family. So I have kind of a bullet point list that I'm going to uh, refer back to every now and then. And the very first thing on this list is called proper beneficiary designation. And this is things that are in uh, my realm and my control. Most of you know when we get accounts set up here, um, usually we use Charles Schwab, that we always list beneficiaries. IRA accounts, Roth IRA accounts, those have built-in beneficiary designations in them. Individual accounts, joint accounts, we use something called transfer on death. And both of these uh, are designed to avoid probate in the event of your death and get your assets to who you want and how you want it. And some people just forget to do that. Uh, and it's surprising to me. And one thing I'd like you to check on is, is not just the accounts that you have with me, because we, we usually have it the way you want, but things like life insurance policies, 401k accounts. I had a meeting with a client not too long ago and we were reviewing his 401k and the client had gotten divorced four or five years ago. And I said, hey, what's your, uh, who do you have as beneficiary on that 401k? And it was still his ex-wife. He had never taken it off. And, and so things like that, can you imagine if he passed away? I, I know that's not the way he wanted it to go. So um, make sure to pay attention to that, annuities. Make sure every financial account you have, uh, aside from like checking and savings accounts, but every, where, where you have your large pots of money, they have properly designated beneficiaries. And there's a couple traps that people tend to fall into that I want to caution you on. Um, and because I hear this from clients. A lot of times clients, and this is typically retirees that are a bit older and thinking about this stuff more, they will earmark certain accounts for certain people. Oh, uh, my son, I want him to have my Roth IRA. My daughter, I'm gonna put her on the annuity. Uh, my grandkids want the house. And that's well intended. The problem with that is each one of those pots of money grow at different levels, okay? So she might be actually drawing money out of her IRA account, and that might stay the same or even shrink a little bit, whereas her home might actually grow over time. And 10 years later, 15 years later, she passes away, and it's really not the way she wanted it because the dollar amounts are so much different. So the better way to do that is think in terms of percentages on, on how you want your money to go. So let's say she has two kids, uh, go just go 50-50 on every pot of money you have. And then it doesn't matter if one grows more than the other, you know, the kids get it 50-50. Um, another pitfall to avoid that I've, I've seen is, oh, uh, I'll, I'll, give it to, uh, I'll give it to my daughter because she's the responsible one and my son will just blow it. And, and, but she'll take care of him. Well, we don't know that. You know, we'd like to think that'll happen, and it probably will. But the daughter is under no obligation uh, to take care of the son or give half that money to the son. If you're worried about that kind of thing, your, your kids may be spending it unwisely or too quickly, I'm going to skip down to one of the other bullet points here in the, uh, the outline that I, I made. That's when you should think about a trust. So what is a trust? Well, proper beneficiary designation and a will for that matter, that will get your assets to whom you want it to get it to in the percentages you want that to be. But once it's to that person, there's no more control. They can spend it however they want it. So if you're worried about how one of your kids may spend it, or maybe, maybe there's a special needs situation, um, that's when you want to think about establishing a trust. And what you can do in a trust is you can outline the terms of how they actually spend their money. So you can say, okay, uh, I have a million dollars, you know, 50% to, to Billy, 50% to, to Leslie, and they can only spend 10% a year, or they can only spend interest and dividends, or they can't spend anything until they're 40. You can put whatever terms you want in there if you think it's appropriate uh, for your family. 
uh, we call it control from the grave. And these trusts are structured as revocable trusts while you're living, so you can always make changes to these. Um, so a trust goes beyond a basic will, and a will goes through probate. Properly designating the beneficiaries on your investment accounts do not go through probate. All your household stuff, cars, checking accounts, etc., those typically will be probatable. Um, a trust is not probatable as long as the asset's titled in the name of the trust. Something else, a uh, couple things on this list that are some basic estate planning documents. Healthcare power of attorney and financial power of attorney. As it sounds, if, if, if you become incapacitated, mentally incapacitated, to make your own decisions with respect to finances, paying bills, making investment decisions, or healthcare, then you pre-designate somebody to make those decisions on your behalf if the situation were to, were to arise. Also, guardianship papers, those are if you have minor children and you're, you're drafting your will, you'd wanna make sure to include those. What, what you're basically appointing a guardian to your children in the event that, that you uh, and potentially your spouse, if you're married, pass away before they're age 18. Um, you, you can still leave money to them, but there's a guardianship that, that has to oversee that and there's a legal process for that. Um, and the last thing on the list, business owners, there's special considerations for estate planning for business owners. If you own a business and you pass away and you don't plan for it, the business will most likely, and if you're married, the business will most likely be inherited by your spouse. Your spouse may have no interest in running the business, may not be qualified to run the business. So what happens to the business? Well, it's probably gonna die on the vine depending on what type of business it is. So you wanna plan in advance if you're a small business owner. I can tell you what I have in place is that I have a, another advisor here in town that I know, like, and trust that's capable. And we have an agreement that if anything happens to me, if I, get, if I die or become incapacitated, then he gets my business, because he's very capable of running it, but he has to buy that business from my wife, because my wife's actually gonna get it first, but then he's required to buy that from her. And I have a life insurance policy to fund that just in case it happens. It's called a buy-sell agreement. Very, very important for business owners. So that was quick, that was basic. Um, call me if you have more questions. Call your attorney if you have more questions. I have some, uh, some good referral sources on some local attorneys if you need this kind of thing done. So as always, I hope you learned something and thank you for tuning in.